exhibit at a gallery downtown tells the story of local artist James Simon. He chose different pieces spanning over 50 years to represent his artistic journey. And he joins us now to talk more about the mix of photos and sculptures and mosaics. You have an impressive line of work, and I'm so glad that you were able to come in and talk to us today about this. Yeah, thanks for having me. So how did you choose? Because you really, you've been doing this for some time, and your your work is so expansive. How did you choose what pieces for, you would put in this exhibit? Um, well, this was a collaboration with Contemporary Crafts, mm -hmm. and also um, related to the Violins of Hope that was is coming to Pittsburgh. So because originally, um, early in my career, I was a violin maker, mm -hmm. and then I, I transformed into making sculptures and public art and you know, things like that for the streets. So they thought it would be an interesting story to show my violin making and how it turned into large sculptures. Well, let's talk about that, because you brought some of this. I think it's so, in we just had the Violins of Hope uh, ladies here earlier this week, so it's so neat to know that you're connected to that. And yeah, so I thought it, people like to see the process of violin making. Mm -hmm. I can't really show much because most of it is in that exhibit downtown. Oh, cool. But I brought some of what I had left. So when you make a violin, you start, this is a mold, and then you, you bend um, these, these um, these are the sides with heat. You bend them around this mold. This mold represents the violin that you're making. Like this one is from a 1600s Nicola Amati violin, very famous uh, violin maker, teacher of Stradivari, actually, the famous Stradivari violin yeah, maker. Right. So you start with that and you bend the, 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 the sides around that. And then um, eventually, you, so then you carve. This is, this is a, a back, so it's carved. And then when it's finished, you put that on, on that and you do the top. And what got me interested in violin making were, I don't know the best way to show these, but these are little um, planes that just made me fall in love with the whole idea of making uh, violins. And you, 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 you use these. That's how you would carve to it. Sculpt the, uh, to sculpt the violins, yeah. So that, that this is are, how you do it. They're like elf tools or something, you know. And just working with something this small. I mean, it's all I don't want to do. I don't want to do it, but this it's is all handmade, and and you use, um, of course, wood carving chisels and all that kind of stuff too. And then this is the beginning of a scroll. So that you you know you cut that out. Wow. And then and, and when I was in my violin making days, I studied in the way that, um, you know, completely the, the way that they did it in the 15, in the 1600s and the 1700s, so yeah. all by hand and all that. It's real. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive. That is truly an impressive skill. And you brought something else here with you. What is this? So, um, so, so this is what I'm doing now. So, um, like right now in the last few weeks, I'm learning how to do fused glass wow. with, with the Pittsburgh um, um, Glass Center in. So Becky at the Pittsburgh Glass Place, um, she's been helping me to, so fused glass is, because I also do large scale mosaics. Mm -hmm. So fused, gla fused glass is a kind of like mosaics where you, you create this collage of, um, of whatever you're, you're doing, the artwork, and then it melts, you melt it and it killed and you get, so this, was, this is from my, my work always often tells stories. I was in the Galapagos Islands. This is a fish market. There were women with fly swatters, you know, swatting flies, and there's the fish on the table. And, the, and so this, beautiful. that's kind of the, the, what this has to do with in my travels. So, I, I, some of your yeah. work, I mean, th this is gorgeous too, but some of it is so large scale. And I asked you, how did you, <clears throat> how did you pick what you were going to put in the exhibit? Because when I saw some of these statues and sculptures that you've worked on before, um, I mean, it is, they're huge. They're massive. I don't even know how you've constructed them. Yeah, well, you can only put in the exhibit what, what, what can fit. Can move <laughs> yeah. and what I have on hand. <laughs> um, the exhibit shows my early work in ceramics that I have some us. Um, and it shows like one window is a violin making workshop. Yeah. So it shows all that. And then it has a lot of pictures of my large scale stuff. The large scale stuff like the Liberty Avenue musicians downtown, which are, you know, the three big musicians on Liberty Avenue, they're made um, first in clay and then I make plaster molds and then I cast them in concrete and sections. And, I mean, you really do have work everywhere, all over the city. Yeah, I have uh, quite a bit of work in the city and, you know, 
some nationally and some internationally too. So. And what I love, I told you this, he has a bathtub in the middle of his living space. Does and it, it is amazing. And I said, do you ever use it or is it just everybody? decoration? It is right in the middle of, is it your living room or your studio? That's, it's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it's my living room, kitchen, not my studio. My studio is downstairs. It is so cool. And you can check it out too by just going to his website. It was really you neat can. to see. It's yeah. a cool space. Thanks, James, for spending some All time right. with us today. Thanks for having me. And we want to remind you, James Simon, A Life of Making exhibit is located at the BNY Mellon Satellite Gallery along Grant Street. It's open daily through October 22nd. The exhibit is free to the public. We'll be right back after the break.